IT security is first and foremost. Second would be there is a lot of focus on IT privacy or data privacy, uh, data sovereignty. And the third would be the new upcoming technologies like 5G and its impact on how workflows within an enterprise will get distributed at a data, data center level, at an edge level and how this would affect uh, machine to machine uh, communication. So this is like a uh, upcoming future generation but otherwise IT security and data privacy are something that is immediate and real and then looking at 5G and IoT would be the next big step. So one is uh, I would say IT democratization refers to IT knowledge and skills percolating from the IT team to the other departments in the organization. Similarly, IT decision making which originally was prerogative of the CIO. So now you have the CFO, the CRO, the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Revenue Officer, Chief Finance Officer, all of them also having a say in the technology decision. So one is a knowledge pervading into the non-IT departments and other one is the other decision makers from departmental level decision makers having a say on the technology uh, direction or the technology choices. This I would say is the two big examples of IT democratization and third would be uh, people from other departments, they are called citizen developers, being a part of the, being a virtual part of the IT application development and maintenance where uh, people in departments, they themselves come up with solutions instead of just being technology consumers, they take up the problem and they kind of automate the whole process using some low code, no code tool where the IT team helps them in the process, I would say is another instance of IT democratization. According to our study, both worldwide as well as in India, IT democratization has truly taken root and there is a lot of collaboration between the IT department and the other departments in the organization and I think it is also happening because uh, lots of solutions are available freely on the cloud where the departments themselves can try it. Like, let us take a typical example, if, if a marketing department were to send a form out for survey, a couple of years back they would have reached to the IT application development and maintenance team and there would be a back and forth for one week on designing the form and then it will go out. But nowadays the marketing team or somebody in the marketing team would just go out to the cloud, pick up a form, put all the fields and just send it out without the IT team doing it. But then compliance, security and governance need to be taken care of. So IT team will have to collaborate with the marketing team to ensure that the compliance, security and the governance is met. So there is a lot more collaboration happening, there is a lot more democratization happening and this has come out in our survey both in India as well as in world. See one big thing it brings up is a cultural change in the organization where uh, individuals instead of being just technology adopters waiting for somebody else to give the solution are willing to take up the problem in their hand and come up with solutions. So instead of being technology uh, consumers, they become solution providers. Suddenly everybody gets enabled on that front. So that's a big cultural change and it's a very big motivational change too. So that is coming from the uh, IT democratization. And second thing that happens is the digital adoption within the organization is bound to accelerate because everybody is willing to be a part of the solution. So the digital acceleration is bound to accelerate, uh, digital adoption is bound to accelerate and the third is people feel that innovation will get a very good boost uh, whenever IT democratization happens. This is something which came out in our survey where both ITDMs and VDMs, a large portion of the ITDMs and VDMs, a large percentage of them felt that IT democratization leads to more innovation. So I think these are the three things I would say, uh, the positives of IT democratization. Uh, with the organization. So empower, empowerment of IT is about IT becoming a part of bigger strategy decisions where IT gets a boardroom seat or whenever IT is saying something the senior members of the organizations are evaluating it. It's, it's, it is also about IT moving from back office to front office. Uh, so these are all some of the uh, ground level realities that happens when IT is empowered. It is, that is very clear because every business is becoming digital and IT has a very big say in how, what is the path to take for digital adoption, be it retail, healthcare, uh, education, wherever it is. Even if you, if you take a retail, what is a brick and mortar store alone, now it might have a website, might have a web shop, 
and it might also have a direct to consumer brand and be featured in some of the social apps like instagram so in all these things it plays a big role so be it healthcare be it education be it retail uh, the empowerment of it the need of the rs the businesses will have to will need to have multiple digital channels and it becomes very important in having them but the ground level at least in india has been all of them agree that uh, it needs to be empowered it needs to have a say in the strategy uh, of the company but actually what on the ground level it's felt that whenever it says a no that power isn't given so so this i think will evolve over time and even the onus falls on both the it department as well as the other departments it department will have to tie in their metrics the business metrics they will have to come up with uh, uh, answers to the questions posed by pdms in a convincing way so that both of them work together to take the business forward so it security has been a very big focus area in uh, manager starting with identity and access management privilege access management uh, security information events management uh, endpoint management mobile device management ransomware management these are all have been focus areas of uh, focus areas of management and going forward there will be a lot more uh, focus including applying uh, uh, latest generation ci ml technologies to it security so that is one big focus area and the second focus area is uh, enterprise service management platform so whenever people go remote or whenever people go hybrid employees go hybrid it becomes important to have a single pane of window where they understand what are all the different services available within the organization be it marketing be it hr be it legal uh, be it support within their colleagues so all this comes in the purview of enterprise service manager and we also have a solution and a very big focus on enterprise service manager both on premise and on cloud and the third is from a business perspective uh, we are on a journey what we call as transnational localism where we open offices and stay invested in various countries we have opened office in europe singapore uh, china japan middle east uh, south america uh, couple of countries in south america so in all this the idea is being uh, be invested in the local in local economy higher locally so that we are able to support both the partners and the customers with feet on the street and this has been a very big focus area for both managing and zoho in the last two years so it security enterprise service manager and transnational localism where we focus with a lot more feet on the street across the world will be the three focus areas of managing so one of the big uh, news items uh, which uh, most of our readers or viewers would have known is zoho corp which is the uh, parent company of uh, managing so we had reached uh, 1 billion dollar in revenue that was the one big achievement and second is if you look at it from india market manage engine has been growing at a very good rate more than 50% plus from a revenue perspective and from a customer perspective our growth rates have been more than 30% over the last 3 4 years and india has become the third biggest market for us i think a lot of uh, this is happening because lots of organizations in india are adopting uh, digital solutions for their uh, efficiency plus there's a lot of push from the government for digitalization so both these factors together is giving us some good head uh, from good tailwinds and we are seeing uh, better adoption of a solution